There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to another past HSC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this HSC exam question, which comes from the ethylene and addition polymer chapter. What I'll do first is I read the actual question. Once I read the question, you have about five seconds to pause the video. And once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So I'll read the question first. The question says, the process of fractional distillation is used to separate crude oil into different fractions. One of the compounds obtained from fractional distillation is C10H22. This compound undergoes catalytic cracking as follows. C10H22 goes into C8H18 plus C2H4. A. Complete the table below to identify the products and the homologous series to which they belong. That's worth two marks. You've got a name of compound, name of series here, and C8H18 and C2H4 as a product here. That was A. B is using examples from your first investigation. Explain how you distinguish between the two series of compounds. Include a relevant equation in your answer. And that was worth two mar uh, three marks. This was worth three marks. B. Right, so what you do now is you pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. Welcome back. All right, so for the A part, all we have to do is we have to identify the products, which are these ones here. So what are their names? And we have to identify the homologous series. And these were the ones which we went over in this chapter were the alkanes, alkanes, and the alkenes. So alkanes and the alkenes. And if you remember, the actual formula was Cn H. 2n plus 2 for the alkanes. And the alkenes had a double bond, so they had less hydrogen. So we had Cn, H, 2n, no plus 2. So we had two less hydrogens for every carbon. Um, now, so for this one, what we have to do is we have to know, okay, is this, is, is this a alkane or an alkene? And we know this one we should be familiar, familiar with. We have this one is ethylene, C2H4, ethylene. And it makes sense because if you have that C2, if you put this 2 in front of here, C2, then we have to take whatever that carbon is and times it by 2 to get the hydrogens. So 2 times 2 is 4, so that's C2H4. Yep, that's an alkene as well. So the name of the series is an alkene. And this has 8 carbons. And remember with the actual IUAPC nomenclature, 8 is oct. So that's oct. And it's oct. Tain. And the reason why is because it belongs to the alkane family. So octane is alkane. And the reason why is because it's this formula. If you put C8, we have to do H2 times 8 plus 2. So to get that formula. So for C2, uh, H2 times 8, that's 16 plus 2 is 18, and that's exactly this formula. So in all octane, it must be an alkane. And for this, you get half marks for this, half mark for this, half mark for this, and a half mark for this. Overall, 2 out of 2. You've gotten them right. For B, we have to talk about a first investigation you've done in this chapter. And explain how you distinguish between these two series of compounds. So between alkanes and alkenes. How we just use that first investigation to distinguish between them. Include a relevant equation. So we should also include a relevant equation in the answer. And if you remember that was a bromination. So the bromine water experiment. I'm writing bromine water experiment. So we have to recall what exactly we did in the bromine water experiment. Especially that helped us to distinguish between alkanes. We have to distinguish between alkanes and alkenes. And distinguish means how do we know that they're different? And the experiment, what we've actually done the experiment is first we had drops of cyclohexene and cyclohexene was our alkene. 
and we put these drops of cyclohexene into our, our bromine water. So we added them into our bromine water. So drops of cyclohexene, alkene, were added to bromine water in a test tube. Right, so the bromine water is in the test tube, and we added this cyclohexene in it, and then we observed the reaction. So we saw what happened. And next, we did the same thing again. So the same procedure was repeated with cyclohexane. So we did the same thing with our alkane, which was cyclohexane, and the reaction was observed. So that's the first. We get one mark for this because we recalled the experiment, which was the bromine experiment. Next, we have to talk about what happened. So the alkene, so that was the cyclohexene, the alkene, because of its highly reactive double bond, that was the difference, reacted with some of the bromine water and decolorized the bromine water. So the color faded when we had the alkene in it because the actual bromide went into the structure. So there was less bromide in solution. Whereas with the alkane, there was no reaction observed because nothing was happening, because alkanes are less reactive, as alkanes are less reactive. So that's how we could differentiate between alkanes and alkenes. By using that bromide water, we saw anything that decolorized the water would have been the alkene. Anything that did nothing to the actual solution would have been the alkane. And then it also said include relevant equations, and you could have written this one. So here we have our bromide water, HOBR. That happens when we have bromide and water together. That attaches to our, here, our cyclohexene. This is cyclohexene. Once it does, we have our, high, our bromide water attached to the structure. And this is why the actual bromide leaves solution and goes away as it fades from solution. Now this was one of the equations you could have given, and the other one was just cyclohexane. So this was our actual alkane. And when we add that into bromide water, there's no reaction, nothing happens. And that's how we could distinguish. If there was no reaction, it was an alkane. If there was a reaction, it was an alkene. So that would have been, overall, you could get one mark for stating the procedure that we did earlier. You get one mark for saying why it happened, because it decolorized the water when it comes to alkenes. And nothing happened when it comes to alkanes. And you get marks for giving the correct equation as well. And that's three out of three. So that's five out of five in total. And where do those questions come from? They come from this, these dot points. So first, we obviously said we have to construct word and balance formula equations as they are encountered. So this was, they can ask us to put down an equation because there was a dot point that said we have to. And then it was identified an industrial source of cracking ethylene from the cracking of some of the fractions from petroleum. So this was the whole alkenes and alkenes came from that dot point. So that was question A. And the bromide experiment came from this one. Identify data, plan and perform first investigation to compare the reactivities of appropriate alkenes with the corresponding alkanes in bromide water. So that was part B. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.